Okay, so it's now being recorded. So, so Dan? Hey, we just want to welcome everybody and we want to welcome you to Heart to Heart with uh, Dan and Angela. And uh, this is our first podcast. And basically, uh, what we're wanting to do with this podcast is called, uh, what is it? Life in Recovery, Life After Religion. What do we want? Lifeafterreligion-recovery.com. That's the name of our, our new website. It's not really quite up yet, but that's a new website. And then um, the program will continue to be called Heart to Heart with Dan and Angela. That has been around a long time. You can see our little board in the back there. So yep. we're excited to have our very first podcast yeah. tonight and with is... Sean Allison, who is our guest tonight. And uh, hopefully you can see him up there. So I'm, I'm going to introduce Sean so while I have the opportunity. So uh, Sean Allison is a medical intuitive working with individuals who are recovering from trauma. Sean works at building transitions that are self-sustainable for his clients using meditation. His life's work has included 37 years in trauma recovery, 27 years working with autism, 15 years as a chaplain, and 15 years as a teacher and energy healer. He heals by bridging perception, imagination, and action. All right, Sean, welcome. I'm so glad to have you on the show tonight. So we were going oh, to thank talk you. About what an honor. Her. And our topic tonight is going to be about being authentic, Dana. Yeah, and I just want to say, Sean, that's that's quite a resume. I mean, 30, 30 some years, you've, you've got your doctorate, you know, and, and what that, that's a doctorate in myself. Yes, yes. <laughs> so it looks like we got Matt, Carrie K on. Yay, Carrie. Boy, you look so beautiful. I had no idea you're so beautiful. Hi, you are so beautiful. You Carrie got your K. mic on there, Carrie. We can't hear you. Yeah, we'll let's see if uh, your, your microphone. Okay. Oh, there, there, there we go. We hear you now, Carrie K. Okay. Fine. So we just introduced Sean. Maybe I should introduce him again. Do you think I should? Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Let me do that again. So Sean is a medical intuitive working with individuals who are recovering from trauma. Sean works at building transitions that are self-sustainable for his clients using meditation. His work, uh, his work has included 37 years in trauma recovery, 27 with autism, 15 uh, years as a chaplain, 15 years as a teacher and energy healer. He heals by bridging perception, imagination, and action. And um, so we, this is our, our, our speaker tonight, who's along with Dan and I. And again, our show is called Heart to Heart with Dan and Angela. And the topic tonight is uh, power, uh, over the power of authenticity. There you go. There you go. The power of authenticity. Yeah, we're, we're just trying to help people have tools. You know, a lot of people, when they get out of these cults, they don't really have any tools or, you know, I shouldn't even say cults, but strenuous situations to life where they've, you know, kind of shut down and they don't know how to move forward. And, you know, there's, it's like, when you get out, you're like, where do I start? Where do I go? What do I do? Has life passed me by? I know we had a radio show for a long time. And a, a lot of guys have, have told me, Dan, life has passed me by. And they they went victim. And they don't know about some of these tools, you know, that you have to overcome. They don't even know what victimization is. They don't know what the meaning of it is. They don't know what authenticity is. Everyone's still trying to fit in. And, but, but the reason we wanted to do this show, me and Angela, was because this is going to be the first of many every Friday night. And uh, we're going to invite whoever wants to share to be free. It's an open line. But we're just trying to help people to really become who they were meant to be, to do more, to be more, to have more. And me and Angela have experienced it. We've gotten back. I'm sure Sean has. I know you have, uh, Carrie. You've, you've overcome and you've, you've found your gifts and uh, you've kind of exploded out there. You're an author. We're authors. You know, Sean's got this practice. And we've all done some amazing things after the cult. So what I want to do and Angela wants to do is we want to try to help some people get these same tools. And so I thought a good one tonight was authenticity. I, I know it doesn't sound like much, but I got to tell you, I think it's a, a, a very powerful alchemical tool. I know that word sounds, everybody likes those big words, you know, alchemical, you know, anointed, you know, enlightenment. But this is a powerful word. This is a powerful way of being in the world. In fact, Dr. David Hawkins talks about 
integrity and authenticity. And he said that it was an attractor field. I don't know if you know Dr. David Hawkins, power versus force, eye of the eye, transcending levels of consciousness. But he said that 200, above 200, you go strong on a kinesiology scale. You can move into courage, you can move into bliss, you can move into all sorts of things. But first, you've got to cross the line of integrity to the nine self be true. And oddly on that scale, if you're down below the line of integrity in your life, then everything is actually a negative gravity pull, which is actually weakening your body. So it's really important that we try hard to stay in our life for the most part in the integrity and above. So below that would be the sadness, despair, discouragement. I mean, it goes number, you know, lower 150, 100, all the way down to apathy down at 50 which is uh, going to get you killed. You know, you're going to be dead in no time flat if you stay in apathy for very long. But those emotions that are negative are what we're trying to avoid. Um, so, you know, to, to be integral to me, like in the religions that Dan and I've grown up in and whatnot, you had to be, um, I don't know, hiding the truth about yourself, hiding the truth about what you're going through, about addictions that you're, you're suffering through, alcoholism, um, sex addiction, whatever. And you're not allowed to talk about those things in um, these religious communities that we've that we've gone to pretty much across the board, maybe with a very few exceptions. And but it, we went to a Seventh Day Adventist um, radio broadcast called um, Angels Three Angel Broadcasting, and we talked about um, sex addiction and dance. Um, very very honest in there, and also uh, masturbation, just things like that. And when we got all done, we went to a, a church meeting the very next day and told them what we had talked about on, on Cherie Peter's show. And they were like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing that ever happened. It ended up being the, the number one best show ever on Seventh-day Adventist uh, Three Angel Broadcasting um, because it was on, honest about things that, that they were not allowed to ever talk about. And they're eating, they're being eaten up alive because they can't be honest about what's going on in their lives. And they said, it's high time we start being able to be authentic and talk about what's really going on. Because I've seen people get kicked out of the church for saying that they have certain problems and that should not be, it should not be. So um, I'm excited to talk about integrity and um, not have to live our lives that way anymore. You yes. Know? Yes, it's huge. Did you guys want to share anything about it? But that's the that's the, the thing we're trying to share is how do we get from point A to point B? How do we get from where we are? Maybe we felt stuck. Maybe we felt I, I think the big one I've always heard is so many people get angry because they feel like time has passed them by. I know I got out of my religious ideal Jehovah's Witness uh, at 40 and I could barely read. I mean, I, I learned to read in the, in the Watchtower because I thought the world was going to end in 1975. So I got a D minus in school. I wasn't interested in school. I went in and put my head down. I fell asleep. And after 40, I just, I started studying. I started reading books. I started wanting to be more, do more. There was something in me calling me to do more and to express more. And there was something bigger in, in my soul and I just needed to know how to tap into it. So I went on a journey of New Thought Churches, 22 years of New Thought Churches, Science of Mind, Unity, Buddhism, Hinduism, Paramahansa, Yogananda, Christian mysticism, and on and on and on and on. And I just loved every moment of the journey, uh, even through masonry, all levels of masonry, a Scottish Rite, New York Rite, uh, Master Mason. I went through all of them just as my journey um, to learn and put together the pieces. And uh, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that journey. I tell people it's my journey. It was what I did to find myself, my peace, my harmony, my joy. And the truth of it is I can't find it for anybody else. But I can tell you and share, like Angela, all we can do is share the, uh, you know, the journey and some of the tools we had. One of the, the tools, I think, is authenticity. I had a hard time with that for a long time. Uh, my authenticity if you don't mind me just sharing a quick story, was in the, the Christian community when I got out. Everyone wanted me to be a Christian. You know, everyone said you should be like me. And so I was playing this, this both worlds. I was juggling the Christian people. Yeah, well, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. But it was much different. It was much deeper. It was more authentic. It was like if you ask a Christian, you know, these things in greater, you will do. You know, their, their eyes just go like this. They're not really interested. They say, well, we just believe. Why do you got to go there? 
And I'd say, well, th those aren't my words. Those were Jesus's words, you know, or as I'm in union with the father and he's in union with me, that you would come into union with us. So there was this oneness that I realized that Jesus and the different spiritual leaders wanted us to tap into, you, you know, you know, the Christos and different things. But anyway, long story short, as I started to understand this other side, this other perspective of the anointing, the Christos and these other things, um, I had to make a choice. Do I play this double life? Do I be out of harmony with my soul? Do I be a house divided against myself? Or do I say, well, I'm a Christian and more, you know, I'm a Christian in the sense that, yes, I, I believe in Jesus's teachings and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, I believe there was a greater message, a greater message of union. I and the father are one. And how do we move into that union of, of divinity in, in us? Go ahead, Angela. You know, I, I just think that everyone's got a little bit of different perspective in all churches I've ever been in. I think I found everyone in those churches always had a little different view than the next guy, than the next guy, than the next guy. But they didn't feel free to talk about that amongst themselves because, you know, otherwise you're going to get in trouble. You're going to have the elder visiting your home saying, you know, Dan, uh, Angela, that's not exactly what we believe, you know, this kind of thing. And um, people are just so afraid to discuss uh, that what they really truly believe and even have a discussion because well, in the Jehovah's Witness faith, you'll be kicked out. You will be disfellowshipped. Um, it's just the way it is. And Dan and I have found that in all the churches, it's pretty much the same thing. They want you in their tribe with their set of rules and their set of dogma and their set of way of looking at everything. I remember going to a Methodist church and I talked about something that was a little bit different about how it was going to be uh, in my view on how it was going to be in the end. And they were differing from how I looked at it. I'm like, I'm like well, you know what? It doesn't really matter because in the end we'll find out that find it out what's what really happens anyway it's not really going to matter and they just blew a cork like that's not okay just to be in the mystery about it you know this is the way it is angela and this is how you got to see it it's not okay just to you know look at it that way that you're just going to wait and see how it turns out and how the resurrection actually goes down in the end they had to have it down to fine science and um, <laughs> I, I think it was not that much longer that Dan said to me, Angela, do you really have to have everything in a nice little neat box of how you believe about every little thing? And he goes, can't you just be okay in the mystery? Wouldn't that be a, a much more pleasant way to live in this world? And I thought, no, no, I have to know everything and I have to have it all figured out, Dan. And, and I thought about it later and I thought, oh, how wonderful it would be if I just said, you know, I don't have to know the answer to that question. I'm just going to be okay and be in the mystery. I'm just going to be like the girl on the tandem bike and someone's driving me somewhere and I'm going to pay attention, but I'm not going to have to know where I'm going and I'm going to be okay with that. And, oh, it really gave me a lot of freedom to know that I don't have to have everything figured out. And if ever, if other people don't see it, like I, I see it, I'm good with that. I don't, I don't care that you don't see it how I see it, but we in this church think that you're not going to have salvation if you don't see it exactly down to the minutest detail of what the Bible has to say. And that, that's just messed up. I think, what do you guys think? You know, what do you think, Sean? Well, I'd like to circle around to what you were talking about before, as far as the vibrational patterns, yeah. the higher vibrations being more efficient and quicker. Um, you can make quicker adjustments. You can process it quicker. The lower vibrations being um, slower and uh, they take a, a longer, it takes a much longer time to get out of. But one of the things that I find in my own life is that uh, the place of discovery, that place of mystery um, is um, found in my shadow self. So the, the areas I'm trying to avoid actually have the greatest resources available. As I shine my light in my own darkness, I allow my vibration, my energy to rise and um, I begin to process things more quickly. And um, there's a buoyancy involved with that. When I'm making choices that drop my frequency, I begin to feel worse. So I, I kind of like to make it simple and say, if it's making me feel better, mm. then I'm um, promoting um, better practices. And if it's making me feel worse, those are areas that I need to examine 
okay. and and find support and and encouragement and um, and actually bring in more information. Yeah, I like and that. That's what I use that meditation for is to gather information. I love that a lot. I really, really do. And it's like when I heard Dan and I listen to a program or something, and you know, you you have this feeling in your body like it's just not feeling good on your body. And I I'm starting to get the hang of how I listen to that. I mean, at least for mm. me at that time, this is not for me at this time. And so um, I, I try not to judge it. I just realized that for me, at least at this time, this is not, this is not fitting with my um, energy or it's, it's not helping me. Like you said, it's not making me feel stronger. And I think it's important to always um, pay attention to that so that we can, yeah, I don't know, st- maybe steer away from things that are really not going to be good for us, at least not at this point in our, in our walk, you know what I mean? Um, so I really am beginning, beginning to enjoy paying attention to how my body's reacting to what I'm hearing and even in what I'm feeling around people, like when I'm around people, what is it that I'm feeling? Cause I'm an empath. I think, well, I know you are Sean and Dan is too. So we feel things from people and I'm starting to get the hang of that a little bit too, paying attention to that because it can make you be a little bit more careful what you're saying to that person or whatever, because you're, you're watching out for what you're feeling. So hearing and feeling, maybe yeah. seeing, I'm not in the seeing department. End of the yeah, end. that's a good point. You well, know. and whether I can and cannot, both of them are equally valuable in being authentic. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Sean, since you've been in this uh, podcasting vein, we probably already are at a half an hour already. What do they do to you if you go over the time limit? Uh, do you have a paid site yeah. or yeah, is it do. the free site? It's hey, you'll free. be fine. Okay, good. Yay. Yeah. Okay. That's because okay. it's me a lot of relief. You know, you know what I found out, guys? One thing I had to do with myself, and it was really cool. I had an unexpected reality. And w- what happened was when I accepted my dark side, you know, my part that I was working on, I really moved into full acceptance with it. And when I did, I realized I could accept everybody else's dark side. I really could. I'd be like, hey, mm. you know, I'm in process. And, and then I went, oh my God, they're in process. So what thing could I hold over anybody? If I was in process, how could I hold anything over anybody? So all of a sudden the friction of that went away. Nobody else was my business anymore. It was, mm-hmm. I could love them because they're in process. And, and another thing I learned too was on this, this enlightenment scale, you know, they talk about, you know, some people see here, right? You know, Leland used to talk about this. Some people see the grass, some people see the treetops, some people see the stars, some people see the heavens, but who's wrong? Nobody. The guy who sees the grass, the guy who says, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus. If you put him on a lie detector, it would test as true. The guy that says, well, mm-hmm. it's actually bigger than that. And he puts his hands in there. It would be true. That's so true. that's a conundrum. So I learned that people can be on this mountainside in all these different places. One guy's talking up here about st- my daughter, you know, star seeds and all this stuff. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And you had grids and yeah. all kinds of interesting it's things. It's like a foreign language. But, but we're starting to get the hang of it, actually. <laughs> but, you know, at first it's like, oh, boy, But what a place to be, to be, to be. And see, here's another thing. That acceptance of self is what Dr. Hawkins talks about is is an attractor field of over 200. It's it's actually 400 on a kinesiology scale. I don't know if you're familiar with the language, but he's measured everything from death and dying, being zero to shame and fear and apathy way down here, 75, 85. And then integrity was 200. Integrity is where people get whole or become more healthy in a 12 step. When they say, well, I'm an alcoholic and God help me. That's when they move beyond the line of integrity and they can move into, you know, like Sean was saying, this more powerful attractor fields. And so what happened to me is when I I came up to that line and I said, I want to be whole. I want to be complete. I don't want to do this dumb shit anymore. I don't want to, I cross that line. And what happens, I moved into acceptance. I didn't realize acceptance was 400. And I could accept myself and I could accept others when I realized that everybody is just talking heads out of a different level of consciousness. Isn't that a beautiful thing? We're all, we can only talk from the level of consciousness we are. None of us are wrong. 
I just think yeah. it's so beautiful. Judgment goes away. Yeah, it's like uh, hope knows despair. Yes. Yes. And so, you know, this authenticity, you know, I told somebody today, I said, let me tell you something. If you've got a voice and you've got a voice of integrity, you've got a magic wand. And they're like, what? That's, that's kind of extreme. No, no, no. If you've got a voice, you can set a boundary. If you've got a voice, you can ask for what you're worth. You know what I mean? If you've got a voice and integrity, doors open. They really do. Me and Angela have seen so many doors open in our life because of the intention of integrity, the intention of being whole, the intention of wanting to be right, to be right with God, to be right with spirit, whatever you want to say. Yeah, that's, you know? that's the whole thing about that line of integrity thing about the consciousness scale, thousand being, you know, like Christ and, and all that. But that 200, it's, it's, it actually makes life flow right. You know, it's like that whole positive uh, mag magnetic flow. It's like being in the flow, 200 and above. But if you're down 200 and below, everything really starts to go kind of haywire where all kinds of problems are going on in your life. So, you know, it behooves us really to stay in that posit positive emotion way of living and being in a higher vibration um, consciously so that we can have our lives work, work right. Um, and um, I'm excited just to be experiencing it because I'm trying really hard to stay in that vibration. And I'm noticing how things are starting to be more smooth in my day. I'm getting more done. Um, I, I go in and out of feeling in, in, you know, stressed or whatever, because I just tend to have a lot on my plate. So, but trying to live in that flow where I'm not feeling that energy where I'm in that positive flow, it's working better. Everything's working better. Everything. Yeah. Everything. And, and, and even prosperity wise, you know, I've, I've talked a lot about that because I'm not afraid of talking about that. A lot of people don't like that. They think, well, that's the money changers in the temple, but it is the money changers in this temple when it comes to integrity. But when you've been blessed, you know, by the spirit for, for wanting to do right, for do for right actions, it's okay to talk about it. And, and it's so weird. I, you know, we get attacked sometimes, but me and Angela had some pretty big miracles around money. We, we, at one point we made seven times our income and it was a good income at the time and everything changed. And we went from having a very hard time and broken down cars to new cars and traveling uh, everywhere and doing what we wanted and eating what we wanted. And at the time that that happened, Angela thought she would never drink a cup of coffee again. She was so poor. Yeah, said, she thought she'd never have a Starbucks again. Yeah, or a nice, nice meal ever again. I really thought I was going to be out on the street. But man, I'll tell you what, we've seen some miracles. We've that's seen for some sure. big miracles. Hey, with... Carrie Kay, is there anything you've got to say about any of this? I've been listening to you guys. It's been wonderful. Oh, so good. <laughs> My thought is just to be, just be in your journey where you're at and be, um, just let go of the labels. When people put labels on you, you have to think this way or that way. Um, you're, you're always trying to be like that label, but when you let go of that um, and just be, then it's easier to go on in your journey and you just let things come to you when that information is, and when you're ready, you know, like they say, when the, the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Yeah. I've lived that my way, that way, since I faced my dark night of the soul, which we've had a show about. Um, and it was freeing because when I didn't live with the dogma anymore, it was, I was allowed to just be who I am and be authentic to who I am. And it's a much less stressful life. And, um, and you're not so worried about everybody else's talking heads. <laughs> but you also understand that everybody is on their own journey and and that's where they're at, and that's okay. So, from mm -hmm. thing that you guys have said, that's that's my little tidbit. <laughs> do you ever, do you ever have a hard time, Carrie, when people? You know what I find? I, I don't know why, but the Christian community seems to be, you know, the most aggressive. Yeah. And I, I I really feel bad because honestly, I hate to say it, but this week I had to let 
several people go, you know, just because I, I, they were wanting me, they were, how would you say it? They were, they were demanding that, you know, I believe this certain way. And even the radio show we were on, it was, it was going very fundamentalist Christian. And, you know, we just said, we're going to end it because we weren't fitting in and we couldn't share, you know, acceptance. We couldn't share, Hey, everybody's got their own journey. You know, the, the volume would be turned down and some crazy guy would come on. And so we dumped the show. We dumped a lot of the people. We didn't really dump them, but I, I want to be free. I want to be yeah. free to be me, you know? Yeah. It's important. And, that, and that's, and that's where they're at in their journey. And that's okay. Yeah. We're sure that we probably all were there too. When I was knocking on doors, I was like that. Yeah. yeah. Shame on you. Yeah. <laughs> we're all I've done it too. Can, right? Yeah. 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 It's okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. God bless them on, on that. And I, I mean it, I mean it, you know, I mean, I, like you said, Carrie Kay, we were once there. How can we judge it? You know, we were once the ones knocking on the door thinking that you're going to be in, in uh, I don't know, I, I, we call it Lake Fire. What'd you guys call it? Uh, our, our, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you won't be in the paradise because you don't accept Jehovah and, you know, these kind of things. And for us, it was, you know, you don't accept our beliefs and you're not going to be in God's kingdom <laughs> and you're going to be in the Lake of Fire. That's sure. how my, 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 sure. We're all God's children. Yes, we are. All of us. We all Amen. just, yeah, we all are. You know, it doesn't matter what path we're on. We're on the same path. Yep. So we got to. Well, and, and I think that strings. this is, I think it's really important and being authentic and in supporting the authenticity in each other, that that tolerance really has um, a substance to it. It's not just, um, you're okay in your path, but your path is necessary for me and my growth. It, it not only supports where I'm at, it expands beyond where I get stuck. It, it feeds me and it nourishes areas that I have yet to discover questions for. Yeah, yes. that's really, really good. Yes. You know, just, just today, Dan and I were just reading about some ways that we need to be a little bit better about loving those who um, are uh, persecuting us, uh, <laughs> being hard on us, that kind of thing. And, it, okay, so remember that movie, um, what's it called, Dan? Um, Dan Millman's movie, oh, A Peaceful, Peaceful Warrior. Warrior. Yeah. Okay, well, in there, this guy named Socrates, he's this old man, I believe he's Jesus, really, literally, came in and he, he taught Dan Millman all this stuff. Well, they have this experience where they went downtown, which they did re really did and got accosted and they had to give up all their, their wallets. And he goes, Oh, well, you know what? I think my coat might fit you. And Oh, oh look, Dan, Hey, don't you, sir. Don't you think that would fit you? Why don't you take that? And there's by the time they get all done, they've taken off their watches. They're all their clothes are stripped down. They're dirty. They got nothing on, but underwear, and maybe some socks and off they go. But he's like giving everything away. And this other monk, another time, he was a robbed a monk. He was alone in the monastery. And the guy um, says, Oh, well, you got anything else? He goes, well, actually, yeah, I've got some nice silver over here. You, you know, you could use that. And he gets the silverware, gives him all the silver. And he goes, you know what? You, you need a car, don't you? And he goes, well, yeah, actually I do. And he goes, well, here, here's the title. And you just take that card. And by the way, you don't ever have to give it back. It's yours. And anyway, I, I was laughing with Dan. I said, Dan, just think about it. When the other monks come back and they say, what, what have you done? You, you've given away our car or our, our silverware. You gave them all the money. You gave them away every, everything you could think of that we had of any value. You've given it all away. What? <laughs> but Jesus literally said in, in the gospels that, um, and in the Aquarian Gospels, which I really like, it's like a, other things that they took out, I believe, took out of the original Bible that talked about, yeah, the, yeah, when you're accosted, do not try to keep your stuff and don't, don't judge that person because your goal is to win their heart and you just give and give and give. You don't hold back if they try to take, and I'm like, man, Lord, I got a long <laughs> way to go. But, um, but, you know, um, I forgot my point on saying that, but it was about judging judging and, and, and honestly caring about people's hearts more than we care about our, our dang stuff. You know what I mean? And, um, not be so concerned about being robbed or, or wronged or lied about, or any of those things. The goal is supposed to be according to Jesus is that you you're concerned for their heart because he said that when they take all your stuff, their, their brute man comes to the end of itself 
their animal man, and that will help them get to the end of their road, which then they can be more in tune with, with, you know, the whole of what we're all trying to be as a whole. And so we're trying to help that along. But when we withhold, we're resisting and it's causing a resistance to their growth, even including our own. And so I'm like, wow, that was exciting. Just mm-hmm. thinking of, anyway, talk about judging today. That made me think of that. Well, you know, in the, the technology of the heart, the way we measure from the heart is much different than we measure materially. And so as you surrender, as you let things go that are material, it brings you into a place of um, surrender, of um, submission, of recognition, uh, of awareness of what's going on around you. Um, and to, to um, say what Carrie Kay was talking about earlier about being, is it's really the place that we can um, explore what's going on without words. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes Shauna, I get, um, I get tired of materiality because you got to clean it. You got to fix it. You got to polish it. You got to vacuum it. You got to paint it. You got to cock it. You got to, you know, and, and, and go every week you got to redo it and redo the laundry, redo all the dishes, redo the cleaning. And I, I'm like, Oh Lord, man, it's like, there's gotta be a way around this, you know? And I just think, I just want to get simple. I want to get, I remember when I got a split up from my husband and I had to start all over again. And so I had a, a car that was falling apart and needed a lot of work and I didn't know it. I was too unconscious to know it, but I went to live with my mom again at age 45. And I just remember, I, I just gave my husband the reins at that point, because I'd been handling everything completely on, on my own. I handed the reins over having done everything I could to make it right. And I was free. And all I had to do was keep my room tidy. Um, I don't know, uh, go to 12 step groups and go to work. That's it. I, I didn't have any worries, no concerns. I had a simple bank account now and my life was so easy. And oh man, I thought that was the best thing ever. And then I've accumulated and accumulated and accumulated. And now I'm like, man, I want to get back to simple. But here's the funniest part. I want to have this conference and event center that is huge And it's going to include a coffee bar and a stage and conference rooms and meeting rooms. And it's huge. And do you think I'm scared? Yeah. So you think, (laughs) you think for a minute that my life's going to get like easier. I mean, that that's responsible for the building. It's it's like a hundred times larger than the home I'm in now. And I'm like, what am, what, what, I don't know. Just saying, I don't know what's going on here, but. As a, I had two words that I've been wrestling with the past couple of weeks. And it's um, responsibility is exhausting. And I really like the space it put me in because um, it helped me identify some of the practices, some of the habits, some of the um, thoughts that I would um, ruminate on that would add to that exhaustion. And as I became aware of my behavior, it allowed me to step into something new, to start looking at responsibility from a point of discovery. It's like, what is it about responsibility that is calling me to action that wants the best that I have to offer? And how can I show up in a way to capture that? Yes. And did that come from meditation, oh. Sean? Did you get still where you had that realization? Yeah, and it came from being uncomfortable and being okay with that discomfort. Um, when it's not just a friend, it is a teacher, it, it is a, a colleague. Um, there's so many roles that we can interact within our own. Um, inner world. And that role playing, that playfulness back and forth to understand um, where we wish to go from here. Yes, John, because purpose, uh, the purpose, that's, that's the thing missing when I'm doing this house cleaning and maintaining of this old house that we live in, um, is that 
I'm not really feeling on purpose. So like if I have the conference and event center, guess what I get to do in there? I get to teach a life skills class. I'm going to get to play guitar on the stage whenever I feel like it. I'm going to get to play my guitar at these conferences, at weddings that are being done at the facility. I'm going to be able to be a part of the, uh, the, the, the uh, what do you call it? The speech, the speaking class. Uh, we're going to have the mm -hmm. speak academy. We're going to help people learn how to speak so we can critique that so I can work with them on uh, getting better at speaking and um, you name it or start businesses, all the things you get to do that are bringing all of you to the table. That's going to be the joy. And I remember when I taught life skills, I just loved life because it was, I worked hard into the night to have the best materials, the best everything for my, the classes that I was teaching. And I just loved it. I couldn't get enough. It, it made me alive, you know, and um, I had moved to Idaho. So I had to quit that job, but it was my, my favorite job in the whole world because I was on purpose. I was doing what I was meant to do. And it, it was the joy. It didn't seem like work to straighten the house anymore because I, I, I still had a home, but, but I was so excited about what I was doing. It was just like, not a big deal. It was lesser important for sure, but I just couldn't get enough of this job. So maybe it's going to be completely different how I feel about straightening this, this conference and event center, because it's, I'm on purpose in every way. And so is Dan. And I think that would be glorious. Yeah. And it feeds your motivation. Yes. Yeah. I, I can't wait, honestly. Well, we did a we did a thing too, guys, with the six screens. You know, we were on there a while, and I had to check my attitude for why I wanted to get back into activism because I was way down this spiritual road. You know, writing books, and you know, we wrote like three books. You know, surrendered key to the kingdom within the divine order of alchemy, the ancient secret to union with God. Um, what's the other, the last one that's written? Um. The, yeah, yeah, our gods yeah, yeah. from prodigal son to divine union. And uh, anyway, I'm, I'm down this road and I thought, how did I get into this road of activism where I'm screaming at the governing body <laughs> and I'm pissed off and angry and I'm doing this show for about a year. And what happened, I realized what happened was I went and visited my brother in Missouri, my two of my brothers. And when I saw my brother, he was so mentally ill. He was totally jacked up. By An the elder witnesses. in the church. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. presiding over us here and, and he couldn't even look at me i was like hey doug hey doug it's dan and he's like you know like this and it took him two hours or three hours to get, to get to the restaurant and i'm like doug doug it's me hey man are you there <laughs> you know and he wouldn't look up and we finally got him to look up but it was a sad thing and i thought okay the watchtower killed my dad killed my mother which shame i know because i was almost dead with all that bullshit but then I saw my other brother and he's yelling out of some home, you know, Jehovah's going to kill you. Jehovah's going to kill you. So we came back. And what I realized, because <laughs> here I was with Leland's group and, you know, the two worlds wisdom and, you know, going on all these retreats and having the time of life, spiritual experiences, metaphysical experiences, un unbelievable stuff. I enjoy yeah. unbelievable stuff and uh, synchronicities. And the next thing you know, I'm arguing at <laughs> the governing body. You know, I've been out 24 years now and I realized I, I had some anger, you know, I was mad. It's you like know, he re got mad. Do you know I what I'm re saying? got mad. I've been all healed, forgave him 12 steps, you know, I way, way beyond, you know, writing books, celebrating life. Life is good. You know, speaking well, the, of the me. atmosphere of the environmental conditions of that network um, supported that anger coming out. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you forgive. I remember this lady said one time, her name was uh, uh, Sh Sherry, uh, 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 that church we went to, who's that lady with a Barbie doll. Um, I think it was Sherry. Yeah. Sherry, Sherry. Anyway, she said that you can forgive people and really with de de depth of heart, forgive people. And then something happens and you get triggered and you literally find yourself in a place where you have to forgive all over again. And I think Dan fell back, like he forgave I started and he did sick. all the work and everything to be free. We just went on a 21 day road trip, 21 days, 7,000 miles. I think it was actually 19, Dan, 19. to be technical. And, and it was like, I needed that time. It was like, what had happened to me? You know, I became like this animal, you know, and my, people were saying, Dan, your face is red. And, you know, I wanted to grab the governing body and choke them. You know, there wasn't no acceptance. And I thought, man, how did I get here? How did I go from, you know, doing these conferences and different things and speaking at New Thought churches and, you know, and ending up back 
with all these people. And it, it was the weirdest thing to, to transcend. But we, I, we, we had some thinking time and we're like, man, they really don't want us on there. And we really don't want to be on there. And I started to feel like I didn't have a purpose on there. I just felt like I was just this angry guy that was going off. And I thought, man, what happened? There was so much, so much understanding I had for people so much, you know, he worked it to even get people there. told me, they said, Dan, you know, you used to be really laid back. You used to be, you know, you just used to have a, you know, kind of this unconditional love and acceptance for people. And you knew they were on different places and you were okay. And you kind of came across that way, but now you were violent. And I guess I was blaming governing body. And I, I got to this point in my mind where I said, they haven't, I, I'm one of these persons. I, I don't like these bullies. And I'm like, they haven't repented. They won't turn around. They keep lying. They lie again. And so I guess I was trying to get a hold of them you know, in my mind by the neck through the six screens. Mm -hmm. And so, but it wasn't hurting anybody but me. And so me and Angela went on this road trip and just started feeling what love was like again and feeling the road mm -hmm. and nature. And I, I visited my daughter who's really spiritual up in uh, Daytona beach. And that's, that's where I start seeing this authenticity. She, she had been true to herself, true to her message she broke away from the Christian movement. She got into the metaphysics really heavy. And what, what was really cool for her was the same thing that happened to us. As me and Angela were moving away, we were getting these invites. Do you want to do this television show with us? We did a show, Are You Too Crazy for God? We did the, we spoke to the ministerial graduate students at, at Mile High Religious Science. We got, we were, we were starting on this little thing and then something just triggered it. And I think it was not being authentic. And so my daughter is being authentic to herself. She's being authentic to her message. And what's happening is she is speeding toward the people who accept her and they are speeding to her. And she's got a group that she, that she works with now. And I guess she's going on some speaking to her, some truth to her with, who's that guy? Jayco. Uh, Jayco and, and these guys, I'm, I'm not into it. But she's on some tour where they're gonna do 30, 22 cities in 32 days. And so she got invited to that. How old is she? She's 23. Uh, She's 23. And almost, like, almost. You know, and just things are like aligning for her real fast. <laughs> so here I was on that path and I went backwards, you know, I went back to you. So, you know, you get, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I want to hide. Well, and, and check in with your body, your <laughs> yeah. description of the higher vibration as you describe your daughter uh, and the attraction that is drawing these people and experiences to her, um, that, is, that is how the higher vibrations work. Yeah. When you're describing uh, your experience and matching the energy on the network that you were last at, um, six screens, right? Right. Um, when you were matching that energy, things were uh, confusing, they were slow, uh, they were very draining and exhausting. Repetitive. And, and so and repetitive. Yeah. Um, and that's all part of the mind control that is at that vibration as well. Real. So um, way to, I just wanted to point that out as a physiological response. Thank what you. were you going to say, Carrie Kay? Um, it's, it's a very negative atmosphere and it feet. And like you said, it, it, it keeps feeding and it's, it's re wounding the trauma. So that you never have a chance to really heal and move on and get on with the things that are more uh, positive. Um, I found I found that to be too. I think oh we want to help them. We want well we want to help them and everything. But when um, last winter when I thought I was going to publish my book, things took a turn, and now my, that book is shelved, and I'm like. Well, maybe I don't want to publish that book. Yeah. Maybe I need to take this energy and do it into something different. And once I redirected that energy, I started to feel better wow. because having it wasn't having a, a good effect on my health either. Mm. Uh, yes, I want to help people, but you can also help by example and showing them. And they, they, they see you going off into another direction that's more um, positive. And then everybody wins. But, and, but I think that 
everybody needs to get to the point where they have to face their own soul. They have to face their own demons. And sometimes, you know, six screens and, and different and different groups, it helps a person do that. But there it has to come to an end. You have to, you have to get over that hurdle and start to start that healing process. I mean, I've been out for well since the 90s, late you know, in the 90s, the mid to late 90s. And I didn't have this group, you know, the 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 ex Jehovah Witness community until about 16. So yeah. I never even looked and I did quite well. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I did quite well. And I now jump coming into it. I see all the, you know, I wanted to jump in and help everybody. Oh, this was my experience. But I came to realize too that you can help to a point, but everybody else, everybody has to pick themselves up and help themselves. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. The longer yeah. you're in yeah. that negative current, you're going to run in the negative current and it's going to affect you. You need to rise up above it and then move forward. And that's about, that's also the rising of your consciousness too, because you don't want to be going in that negative. Yes. You want to, you want to rise up and, and catch that wave of current that's higher than yourself. Yeah. That's, that's very <laughs> powerful. Yeah. Yes. Very powerful. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, I wanted to acknowledge something that you were pointing out is this idea of transformation that we can take a lower energy form and we can put it to work in our favor by raising the vibration of that energy. So you're transforming something that is, let's say angry or um, wounded and you're sending it in a direction that is productive and that's called transformation. Yes, and somebody told me that I, it, it was a it was a weird kind of a guy that, that I don't want to go into him, but he basically gave a good analogy. He was talking about drag on spirit life force energy. And he was saying that the dragon, you know, drag on force energy that's in people can drag us down, right? And so he was saying that the dragon in the others or in myself wants what do you call it? Um, controversy. It wants engagement. And I went, holy shit, like this is what we're doing at Six Greens. We're, we're engaging with the dragon. And he says, and when you engage with the dragon, you don't heal. And I started to feel like, Carrie, I was starting to feel sick. I was even starting to feel hopeless. And I told Angela, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, man, we feel like we have everything, but yet we don't have nothing. Like, what is going on? And we had to take this road no trip purpose, right? to kind of wake up. And, and then I, I realized on the Six Greens, I had to make myself angry in order to start talking, I had to think of something the watchtower did. I had to think of some like negative drama, thing. Right? I had to go on there and look for something. Then I, then, and then I thought, oh my God, that's when I realized something was wrong. And then I did a video um, a little while ago and I was changing directions. And I told some people on there, I said, maybe, just maybe you could be becoming a victim instead of getting healing, because you continue to tell your story. It's okay to tell your story, get validation. Oh, I feel for you. But like a teacher told me one time, she says, Dan, I feel sorry. I'm so sad that happened to you, blah, 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 blah. And then she says, but do you want to get well? And I was like, wow, that was cold. And she goes, no, I can validate you for the next 10 years. But she says, do you want to get better? And she's this millionaire. I mean, she had a beautiful home and what I would think was successful. And I said, yeah, I listened to her. And uh, anyway, and the other thing that got me well was I went into an inner child journey and I heard there were 300 people in there and I went in there and I couldn't wait to tell my story. Dan, the victim, you know, wait, do you guys hear about my witness story? I lost 40 years of my life. And so I went in there and there's 300 people and we broke off into groups and every one of them started crying. None of them felt they could touch God. They were all, they had us do statues and things of what God looked like and what you look like in comparison to God. And I realized I didn't have a story. I realized these people had a story. This girl was raped by a preacher. This guy was shot up with dope and screwed by his dad. And I was like, I don't have no story. What am I telling my story for? So that was a long time ago. That was 20 years ago. I did that inner child journey, but I slipped back. I slipped back into 
the emotion of you killed my dad, you killed my mother. My mother died with her eyes open saying, Jehovah's going to kill me. Jehovah's going to kill me. And then I saw my two brothers and I said, I got to do something. I've got to go back and help. Like Carrie said, we got to help. We got to do something. But the truth is the realization that I came to was people got to come to the end of themselves. It's their journey. It's their responsibility. So I did a video that my last video I did, I said how I move from my head to my heart. And I talked about how witnesses want to keep you in your head. Don't trust your heart. It's treacherous and desperate. But the heart, you can't control it. The heart, you can love without, um, what do you call it? Unconditional love. You can, you can love without having somebody love you. The heart is uncontainable. So I thought, no wonder they try to keep you out of there. So I was telling about how I shifted when somebody, three little kids handed me a dollar. And I looked at him while I was at the door and I the thought, why, why are you going to kill these people, Jehovah? Are you insane? These little girls handed me a dollar bill. and All nice and neatly dressed. Yeah, they didn't want our money. They didn't want anything. They just said, hey, have a good day. And the mother smiled real big. And it was this nice house. And right then I moved out of here into here. And it changed my whole life. That was the beginning of the end. Yes, I moved into heart and I left the watch. I left the witnesses. I threw the magazines. It was automatic. I got in the car and I just threw them on the floor. And I said, this is not the truth. This is, and I went, uh oh, what did I do? Oh, get back in your head. That's <laughs> Satan, you know, all the programming, get back in the program. And so I did this video and I put it on YouTube, Life After Religion. And everybody goes, Dan, we've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for some good shit. We don't like all this rhetoric, man. This is good. Help us move on. And I was like, oh my God, you know, and we have moved on. And I was 20 years out, already rebuilt our life. And, you know, <laughs> you know, I guess I just want to say this as far as our experience with the, the Six Greens program. I just feel like it's not bad to validate what you've been through. But once you've been able to be validated, to keep on hearing people retell stories week after week that remind them of what they just forgave last week and let go of last week, it re-injures and it keeps people re-injured and restock. No, and oh, I'm sorry, Kay, yeah. you, Carrie Kay, you did say that. No, so, true. And, and so I, I think we just have to <laughs> let go and be done, be done. Do not allow people to suck us back into the drama and the emotion of what we let go of already. And I think that's the lesson that, um, that we learned. in, in the whole well, And I think that Carrie Kay said it earlier when she said that we need to just be. Yeah, be. To be still, to be quiet. Even her prompting slowed me down. It shifted my presence. Yeah, me too. You know? You know, and there's a, there's a lot of teachers that talk about teaching without a word because as we move up in this consciousness, I say up, but however way it is, but as we move into greater and greater awareness, we carry an energy field within us. We carry an energy field. And, and some people say that people can heal just by being in the room with you because mm -hmm. the energy field of love, the attractor field of unconditional love is like 500. And Dr. Hawkins said he worked in a schizophrenic place where he dealt with schizophrenic, canatonic schizophrenics. And he said when he would go in there, people would be healed. He had one of the largest practices in the world. And he said that just the energy of unconditional love and it saved him from getting bit by a snake one day. He put his foot right over the top of a rattler because he lived in Sedona, Arizona, and it didn't bite him. And he felt it was the energy field of love that held that snake at bay. But he talks a lot about, see, when you move into the 500, you move beyond mind. The mind says it's like this, it's like that, it's mathematics, it's left brain. But when the two become one and the eye becomes single, and the whole body, you know, becomes enlightened because it's, it's, it's illuminated. It's, it's all the chakras. It's all the energy centers in alignment. He says, when the two become one, the eye becomes single. And anyway, what was I saying about that? I forgot. I was saying something. Mm, I'm just trying to stay in the peaceful place is what we were talking about um, that Carrie Kay was discussing. Yeah. Oh, so, so unconditional love is a powerful attractor field. It's at 570 and the healing arts start at 570 because it's not you doing the healing it's the energy field mm -hmm. that's moving through you it's, that's it's the, the collective yes, it goes yeah. beyond our struggle it and is. supports you know yes. what's yep. trying to heal 
That's right. Mm-hmm. And that's why they say like the, the 400s are all mind. It's, it's all, it's got to make sense. It's the scientists. It's some of the scientists were at 499, but they didn't go into 500 because they couldn't let go. They couldn't let go and let God. They couldn't get past the ego. They couldn't see the left brain doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Life doesn't make sense. So if we'll hang out in the, in the, uh, the realization that this, this energy field is real and this light is growing and we're allowing us to stay in a, in a vibration that makes you brighter. It just does. Right. And then we're going to be like that. Remember that Eckhart Tolle? Um, he said he was sitting on a bench one time and he was doing the meditation and this love, love of God was filling him to the nth degree. And this guy who was uh, talking homeless, to him on the bench. homeless next to him says, what did you just do to me? And he goes, I didn't do anything, but it, literally he was severely touched because of, of his presence. And he, he felt something had been done to him. There was no resistance. It was like the, the thought that he thought was going to, that he put out toward the guy to, to Tole just went right through him. There was nothing. He just accepted it, loved him anyway. Imagine if we let that kind of love be in us all the time. Yeah. And all that was there. And the guy's like, what would you just do to me? And that's the power. That's the power that's available to us. And that's what I've been missing. And that's what I've been moving away because I went back into mind. I went back into an eye of an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And, you know, back into this, apparently I had some healing that I had to do to finish up. Or reheal at least. Yeah. I've always had a thing about my mother because she was a schizophrenic. And so I was her defender. And so I always hated the bully. I was always the guy with the baseball bat. You know, my brother was getting beat one day and I beat a guy, you know, I just hit him with the bat as hard as I could. And, uh, but I was always like the one watching out for everybody. And so I kind of took that role on again, you know, with the six screens, I just went on there and I wanted to get a piece of Stephen Lett and, you know, those guys who said they wish we were dead, you know, Tony Morris and, and just grabbed by the throat. And I thought, man, I, I was listening. <laughs> I, me and Angela were listening to some stuff. Um, I don't know, it was channeled literature or whatever it was, but it was, it was this thing called, what was it called? Uh, and God said, and it was talking about this lovingness. And all of a sudden it reconnected to Hawkins and all this stuff. And I thought, where in the hell you can be in a whole new reality and, and not even know it. And so I'm in this, back in this under 200 eye for an eye battling, you know, Old Testament minds, you know, and here there was a new law, you know, the new understanding, the greater understanding, the love, the unconditional love, loving your enemies and understanding where they're at. And, you know, just, I was like, oh my God, I had forgotten. So you know, it's been it's great funny. to remind myself, get back there, you know. We, we felt like we were helping people to be validated and bringing tools. And that's why we stayed on as long as we did. But however, it was too much negative still because we always had people it was hard to get to raise the vibration or raise the consciousness on the program couldn't do it could we no we just couldn't do it anyway you know we're at an hour already so i think we we should probably out of respect for your time to let you guys go but you guys were so awesome and so great it was our very first show ever our first podcast uh july 8th 2022 and I'm excited that we did it. And I'm excited that we got you guys on that were so gracious. Yeah, yeah if I could just say something just to, um, to, to end on mm-hmm. is when we're looking at authenticity and integrity, it includes um, being able to have who we are at any given time. So it means that the worst of who we are and the best of who we are are meeting in the middle, in the middle of the heart, in the middle of being and breathing. Yeah, I like that, Sean, because, you know, I like it how you are learning and you too, Carrie Kay, to accept the shadow side. Um, and, and so what I feel like you just said to me was trying to bring the, your, your God self and your shadow side together into one and finding harmony in that. And um, I'm, I'm just beginning that place what were you going to say carrie k balance balance you find the balance between your shadow side and the other side the light side you find that that um that equilibrium the harmony between the two mm, yes beautiful you know yes. that's why <laughs> there's a there's an allegory which was the crucifixion and they said jesus or the christ is what hung in between the two polar opposites 
you know, the head and heaven feet on the ground or right and left brain. And so, you know, I did a thing one day where I talked about the left brain has to surrender so much. It's, it's what plays God. It knows everything. It's just on its own it's journey. Logical. It, it, the, the right brain's facing inward. You remember Jesus said, I tell you today, he'll be with me in paradise. Well, it's, it's already ready to be connected, but it's not 220 yet. It's only regular internet. But when we surrender, when the left brain surrenders, I, I don't know why this guy dies. The, the two come together and, and become one and it forms a royal arch and the two become one. And, and like Carrie said, the, the harmonic, the balance between the right and the left, the equilibrium, the Christos is activated or the pineal gland. Mm -hmm. It's the middle place. Mm -hmm. And then we get clear sight and we get so many things. We connect Intuition, really with divinity and everything yeah. comes and into then us. Wisdom turns into understanding and then the left brain can get to work. And you experience profound peace. Yes, yes. <laughs> Give me hard. some more of that. Yeah. Amen. I know. Amen. I, I so I'm wondered all, all the it. time. I thought, how did I move so far into my left brain? You know? Well, we love you guys. Thank you for yeah. being with us and sharing your, your beautifulness, your beautifulness. Yes. And if oh, you guys ever have you. a topic you want to talk about, feel free to you know, message us and say, Hey, I really got, I'm passionate about this thought. I want to just elaborate on it and build on it. And we'll just all talk and we'll yeah. invite whoever, invite whoever you want. We, I invited several people. So, you know, yeah. Carrie Kay, same for you too. We just loved having you and uh, love your peace. I just, I just, I saw it. You post it. I'm like, I'm just going to go in and listen. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you I'm glad I came on. Thank you. Too. Yeah, I love you your guys. artwork too. You're yeah, really great, a great nice artist. artwork. Wow. Wow. She's gonna be a, wow. a maiden. She's gonna be a maiden in a lavender field. Wow. It's beautiful. Is, it, is that water? It's, it's um it's acrylic. And then once I finish the acrylic um how I want it, I'm gonna finish it with oils. Where are the lilacs gonna be on the picture? Um let's see if you can see at the bottom. It's just, mm. I'm working on the maiden. Um, yeah. it, uh, nice. Beautiful. Just love uh, it. And how about yeah. the, those other ones you did those two in the back of the wall there? Yeah, there's really nothing. All my stuff is like out on a show right now. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, these are just, this is my wall, my gallery wall where I keep things. Something. Neat. Well, keep it up. That's, that's well, it now. seems to me as uh, you're writing pages with paint yes i do yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's very good <laughs> yeah it's very good good observation yeah. Yeah. yeah all right you guys well we love you thank you yeah, for coming on you. once again all right. All right, you guys. All right thank you all right. thank you everybody bye for now bye, bye, bye sean thank you so much thank sean you. thank you you're welcome and recording did you hit that no